Okay, it's time to attach this thing and, and get those last details in. So let's unhide the, the body. And let's uh, detach or delete uh, polygons to the same edge loop. And then let's uh, duplicate and invert the X scale for the hand and select all of the pieces and use my new merge tool to bring it all together. There he is with his hands. Hallelujah. All right, well, we knew they were going to be a little bit off in the reference. Oh, there's the, ref there's the front. So that's the front view reference. So the fingertips are, are reaching pretty good. Um, on the right hand view, uh, let's see. actually they, they reach pretty good to the tips of the fingers on the right hand view as well. And I guess the major difference here is that I, I kept my thumb, I kept my thumb back. I pulled the thumb back. And I probably spent, uh, to be fair to you, I probably spent um, an hour and a half to two hours off recording, uh, pushing and pulling vertices on the hands. Uh, I also did, uh, I would remove edge loops and I would put edge loops back, particularly on the digits. Um, I put the thumbnail in. Um, I tweaked the fingernails, although in general I'm not happy with them. It could be a lot better, but I am happy with the palm. I am happy with the edge loops in the palm. I am happy that I can remove stuff from the palm or from the digits to lower the poly count at very, very quickly. So I could come in here at uh, any point. I could come here in at any point and, you know, and start picking edge loops to remove them. And that could, you know, very, very quickly uh, simplify the mesh and this is basically what I was doing off camera as I was going through picking picking edge loops that I could remove to help simplify the fingers and hands and such and and even going through the the thumb again uh, picking and removing like this and then I would come back in and, and drop it back in and the edge flow feature tended to kind of approximate the curvature better than than what I had there so um, not bad, not bad at all. Uh, and my poly count is at a whopping uh, 6,300 now, which uh, quite honestly, th that's not very high. It's, it's not a very high poly count. So the last major edge loops to add to the body um, are the, are the long vertical ones that run up the sides that run across the digits and you can see that that will add a considerable number of vertices to the character. Uh, the good news is is that will end inside the ear. Yep, right there inside the ear. Um, I don't have to actually go into the ear, probably better that I don't. So I think what I'll do is make triangles right here at the back of the ear. Right, so two triangles in the back. Let's use the multi-cut tool to make those. And cut the triangles in the same direction. Okay. All right, now testing that out. The edge loop should Yeah, it'll stop right there on the back of the ear. Okay. So the edge that I'm about to drop will add not only a considerable number of vertices, but very, 
useful vertices running up and down the ribs, down the arms, across the tips of the fingers, a little bit more on the neck, and on the inside of the thigh and the buttocks. So that edge really just considerably added. So I, I went up a thousand uh, faces by adding that edge. And I'm going to add one more. And now I'm up to 7,800 polygons, uh, 15,600 triangles. Which, in terms of high-end gaming, that's not bad. Granted, he doesn't have any clothes or weaponry, so uh, we'd probably have to remove some stuff. But uh, that's not a bad point count. And because of that edge flow feature, um, I'm just going to take a little bit of time here to examine contours. But let me tell you that that's looking that's looking pretty good, pretty good indeed. Um, I finally have some vertices on the inside of the thigh to sculpt with, on the inside of the buttocks to sculpt with, and on the inside of the foot, running long ways down. It added just perfectly to thighs. It really just added really well to the arms. I could do a little bit more work on the inside of the tricep and bicep here. A little bit more sculpting on the elbow. I could use maybe two or three or five more cross sections on elbow if this is going to be a high res character. I could use more uh, cross sections on wrist and forearm if this is going to be a high res character. Really, really nice. And uh, the only uh, parts that we're missing here would be as privates, um, but in most cases you don't need that. I would say in very much most cases you don't need that. And um, toes. In a lot of cases we don't need toes. Um, so I'm going to finish this model off with a suggestion of toes, but I'm not actually going to put them on. Um, I'm running kind of long on this model, creating this model anyway. And the process that you saw for the digits on the hand it will be the same for the toes. So there's you're not missing anything there. And the rest of the time I'm going to spend sculpting uh, the general forms. It's now been about three days since the last time I recorded and just a fraction of a second for you. Uh, but in those three days, on and off a little bit here and there, I was able to uh, modify the form of the character, um, sculpting, checking contours, looking at reference, and so on and so forth, and just making minor, minor adjustments. I didn't want to articulate the rib cage or the pectorals or the abdominal muscles. Really, I didn't really want to articulate anything too strongly. Um, I just wanted to have enough geometry there in order to support um, uh, character deformations during animation time. Um, when we actually skin this thing. So I think I have enough in the hand to articulate close-ups of the hand, and I think I have enough in the face to properly uh, articulate deformation for the face. And I think there's uh, enough in the body, and it's designed uh, simple enough that if I needed to increase it, um, I could do that very easily, yet without uh, dis uh, non-destructively, uh, so I wouldn't uh, hurt the textures. And I'd like to share with you those very simple maneuvers that I did in order to adjust the mesh. It was basically a balance between adjusting contours using the modeling toolkit's uh, move tool with soft selections at varying uh, radii. So sometimes I'd have a larger radius, sometimes a very, very small radius. And I'll just hold down B on my keyboard to change the radius of that uh, soft selection, just the same as the normal soft selection and the artisan tools. So what I would do is I would leave uh, the transform constraints off and make any minor adjustments to uh, contours that I believe needed to be done. And then once I made those minor changes to the contours in order to maybe give them a little bit more shoulder, so I gave them a little bit more uh, muscle, 
in his uh, trapezius on the back of the deltoid and uh, adjustments to the lower back so I can actually see a little bit of muscle coming out on the lower back and also changing contours on the buttocks pushing in vertices a little bit and just changing the overall uh, shape of the character and then once I felt that I had a much better contours and shape to the character and uh, again checking anatomy reference and checking against the reference that I already have in Maya once that I felt I had that good what I would do is then clean the flow by then switching to the transform constraint surface and I would go through uh, with the tra with the move tool with varying uh, radii to soft selections and I would simply slide things around on the surface so I'd have to kind of nudge things around until I felt that the flow was moving in the right direction and also was nice and clean so I had to do a bit of cleaning so I would turn off soft selections with the surface constraint and I would adjust these so that I could kind of visualize this line I didn't want a crooked line you know I don't want to have one over here like this like that that's a crooked line I don't want those kinds of lines so I spent time cleaning up any of the lines that I saw uh, anything remotely close to that and everything else is fairly clean flow clean flow in the face which we already worked pretty hard on but after doing the modifications to the, the contours of the character after inserting those large um, long uh, edge loops on the sides of the arms which cast all the way around the body that did in fact change the contours slightly even the the edge flow tool uh, the edge flow option in the multi-cut tool wasn't good enough so I had to come in here and make modifications uh, to the overall uh, uh, contour and shape and just the volume and then and then take a look step back turn the camera several times looking at the specular highlights uh, I adjust the value and intensity of the specular highlight how, how spread it is so that I could better assess the changes on the form and again I'm just looking for a, a suggestion of the of the form underneath the skin um, because I ultimately would uh, intend to bring this guy to ZBrush for the final detailing so I don't need to see ribs or strong abdominal muscles um, I don't need to see um, uh, e I don't even really need to see a clear definition of clavicle I just need to have a suggestion of it and edge loops that flow in that direction and then the displacement map or normal map uh, can take care of the rest um, I did a considerable amount of work on the hands uh, thinning the hands um, changing shapes I, I did quite a bit of back and forth with that and it's just one of those things that seems to be ongoing and then the feet I kept uh, very simple I'm just going to put socks on them or shoes and I just have a suggestion of the overall shape of the foot and I just gave a suggestion of the bones uh, at your ankle and that's that's really about it I just keep kind of surfing through different areas of the body pulling back turning looking comparing to reference um, uh, and, and then of course checking again against my own reference in here uh, there was many many times where I was adjusting the form that I thought was right looking at other reference and then I would go back and check against my reference and realize that I was actually quite far off contours um, for example, earlier this afternoon, I realized that my biceps and uh, uh, triceps had actually come off of the of the uh, profile view quite a bit. And in fact, I had kind of sunk them in, so his arms weren't looking quite as full. And so I was able to make that assessment by comparing it against my reference even this late in the game. So just doing a whole lot of that, and you know, you're going to take another maybe five to ten or more hours depending on your level of experience with figure sculpture here's something that, that happened on, on more than one occasion that I, I found to be uh, particularly annoying and so I started to kind of pull back away from these tools and that was the uh, that is the um, sculpt uh, uh, geometry tool so this basically uses artisan brushes and those artisan brushes if we select it in object mode and then hit it okay now it's active and when we hit alt R that turns on symmetry sculpting right and if we hold B we can change the radius and so on so we were doing a lot of this earlier I was doing a lot of this earlier and, and I still think it's good I, st I have I don't have too much of a problem with it but what happens is and my big big tip for you is only work 
keep your eyes on one half of the model. Okay, so even though I'm modeling in symmetry, what happens is at some point, let's see if I can get a good, like, yeah, okay, like the, the pull tool, for example, at some point, you see how the arrow on the other side is pointing in the right direction, the same direction as where my cursor is. Okay, then when I get up near the head, for example, see how it flipped? Okay, that starts to happen. And um, I noticed that this was happening too when I was on a totally different project earlier this summer trying to do cat fur, um, that this same thing was happening when I was trying to model fur, and it would just flip out. And that was very, very frustrating um, because it was actually very, very hard to maintain symmetry when sculpting the fur. Um, so here it's not as hard to maintain symmetry because I still have the option to cut the model in half and uh, symmetrize it. And that's where this next tool came in because of these problems that kept happening. So by the time you see this recording, you'll already have this tool, so that's going to be good for you. Um, but that tool is, is this uh, symmetrize button that I have added to my modeling shelf. It's basically a combination of Miron X and the merging combining tool, and it just does it all in one. And, um, and it only works on one object at a time in order to, to ensure, well, just to ensure it's working. So um, if I just drop out of this tool, I'll turn off my reference and um, go to the front view. And I'm just going to select half the model. And I like to select half the model for face-wise. I'll come up real close to the face, get close to the x-axis. Oh, turn off symmetry. And delete half the model at the face. And then I'll do the body second simply because of those tight details in that area. And I won't get too close to the center line because there's some crisscrossing polygons at the buttocks. So I'm going to get close, but not too close. Make sure I'm not deleting something I don't intend to. Okay, and then delete that. All right, and then there's going to be some stuff on the inside of the thigh that didn't get caught. There's that little little bit from the other side. And there'll be like one little polygon or two polygons here on the inside. Just because it was really compact in there. Okay, so that's the full half. Then what I would do to guarantee that the model is um, th at center, I will double click the open edge loop. Come up here to the mouth. Re remember the mouth is still open. It doesn't, it doesn't have, it's not closed. So we can deselect those parts of the mouth. And so now I should just have that one border of edge all the way around. Make sure it's absolute X zero. All right, and then it's prepped. Now it's ready to symmetrize. And so with this new tool, uh, as, as long as the pivot point is dead center, uh, in this case, I'm at the origin, it, it'll work fine. And uh, you select it and just run symmetrize and everything's done. So it, 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 it duplicated it, it inverted the scale, it um, combined it, it merged at the very low tolerance of 0 0.001, it softened the edges, and it deleted the construction history. So it just gives you a good clean slate right off, right away. So I don't have a fast way of deleting half the model, not yet anyway, but that is a fast way of getting it all back together again and not having to go through all those little steps. So hopefully that'll come in handy for you. Okay, so now that I'm fairly happy with everything compared to reference that I have been using this entire process. It's time for me to get those arms into a position that's more friendly to rigging and to a pose that's more friendly to rigging for the shoulders. Ideally, again, I said this a long time ago when we started, ideally I'd like to have those arms in the uh, about 45 degree angle pose outward, um, but these references were just so good um, for the most part that this was the only thing that was missing. I felt it was um, a sufficient, it was an okay to compromise that and to move forward with working on it. Um, so uh, if you are working directly with your designer as you should be on the next character, then uh, communicate to them that you want the arms up. All right, but well, we don't want them all the way up, not in a T pose. This is what people call the T pose, but we're just gonna go about halfway to T pose. Okay, notice the selection that I have on the arms. 
where I go all the way up in the back of the tricep and then a little bit of the deltoid here and compare that to the front. Okay, make a selection similar on yours. And then turn on soft selections and make sure that the, uh, for, well, first of all, make sure it's set to surface, not volume. And then make sure the distance is far enough that we get a little bit of movement on the top of the shoulder and on the inside of the armpit. And you'll notice that when I rotate this, it's going to pull a little bit on the pectoral and latissimus. So we're going to have to re-sculpt that and notice the amount that's going to pick here. And also with the arms up slightly, there's going to be a change in the, in the angle of the scapula. So there'll be a little bit of an angle, stronger angle to the scapula, which just so happens that our our topology is flowing in that direction and it's going to work out very well. Okay, so going back to the front view, I'm going to hit E for rotation, just regular rotation. I'm not using the modeling toolkit. Hold down D for dog and then move the pivot point to about this location in your shoulder. And then using the yellow ring, which is the view viewport uh, rotation, raise the arms Raise the arms until you feel you're going to have some room to work in the armpit. Okay, so T-pose would be way up here. Okay, we want to be part way to T-pose. And the reason that I like this pose the best, that's, that's pretty good, that's a pretty good distance right there. The reason I like this pose is because it doesn't put tension in the top of the shoulders and the trapezius. If you were to raise your arms all the way up into the T-pose and do that for yourself right now, you can see in the mirror or feel in your shoulders how you have much more tension in your, in your shoulders. So this is just part way there. And the advantage of this is it gives you room to work in the armpit. Okay, so once you've made this modification, now just spend a bit of time again looking at reference, making comparisons, and tweak the armpit and slight changes to pectoral and slight changes to uh, the, the deltoid and trapezius on, on the back and, and scapula curves on the back. But really, it's very, very minor. A lot of the work is just right here in the armpit. And I think the best way to begin this is to compare this to the front view reference um, with the uh, arms down. And I would stay with this a little bit closer so this will get tucked in. And then just remember that when you raise the arms up for someone who has a significant latissimus muscle running on the back and obliques, that's going to pull up at a bit of an angle and outward. Okay, and there's plenty of reference floating around, and I've added several things to my Pinterest to that are that are close to this kind of pose in shoulders, and I'll just bounce back and forth with those references. So nothing new here, just wanting to get to this teep up uh, well. Not quite a T pose, but wanting to get to this neutral pose in preparation for rigging. And again, I like the palms forward. I'll just remind you, since it was hours ago, I like the palms forward because it takes the twist out of the forearm. And I guess there's some debate in the industry whether or not to have the palms down uh, or the palms forward or to have the thumb relaxed. Uh, in this case, I feel that having the thumb pulled back slightly, but the palms forward makes for uh, simpler rigging when laying out the uh, joints, the bones, for the hand um, from the front view. Okay? All right, so on to the next thing. I'll do a little bit of armpit sculpting. So up to this point for correcting the armpit, I've done a little bit of relaxing using the uh, sculpt geometry tool, just the relax part. And uh, I took that as far as I could. And then I came in here with the move tool uh, with surface sliding. And I also used soft selections, and I just kind of pulled apart as I went. And then when I felt that I couldn't pull it apart enough, I started getting some crisscrossing vertices. I then turned off the sur uh, I then turned off the soft selections. I kept the surface constraint on, and then I just started pulling them one at a time away from each other. And now I'm getting to the point where it's it's separated. It's looking pretty good, but now I need to actually articulate armpit and, and tuck some vertices in, uh, pull a little bit of pectoral out, and, and and so on and so forth. So now I need to switch surface constraint off and uh, start tucking things and, and moving things around a little bit in order to get those those things articulated. And I'm going off reference at this point, um, going off of a bit of experience, and then I'll go back on reference and see
see how far off I've come. And it will pay off to have this many edges coming on the inside of the armpit when you raise the arms up, so that when you create those corrective, when you create those corrective uh, uh, joint uh, changes, or what are they called? Corrective, corrective blend shapes. Excuse me. So when you create the corrective blend shapes for the uh, shoulder movement, uh, you'll have enough geometry in the armpit to uh, to articulate that. Yeah, so I just I do I've been doing a lot of this where I'll I'll switch to surface oops switch to surface constraint and then I'll switch back to no constraints and adjust contours and then switch back to surface constraint and I'm always going to these extreme angles um, making decisions. Okay, does that feel too weird? Is there not enough latissimus there? I think I could actually pull that out a little bit more looks pretty caved in and do that with a, a broader brush without the surface constraint a little bit like that a little bit out yeah that feels a little better There's more to do, but I think that gets to the point and illustrates it, and you can spend, obviously, as much time as you need or want on on your character. So I think that, that, this, that this definitely illustrates the point of getting the arms up and then correcting, correcting the arm uh, pit and uh, getting those edges nice and clean again, clean topology, ready for rigging. There's just one more thing I'd like to do for this guy for presentation, um, besides some of the miscellaneous things like teeth and tongue and eyes, um, which I can add later at any time. But right now, I just think it'd be good for presentation to put some boxers on him, and uh, maybe some socks, or some shoes, or some slippers. Um, so I'm going to use the live modeling and basically use his body as a kind of retopo to draw the next mesh on top of it. So I'm going to select the mesh and select in object mode and hit the big magnet icon right here which makes that mesh um, a live mesh. Then I'm going to switch to my front view and choose my quad draw tool and I'm also going to turn on my wireframe here so you can see that the the character is highlighted in this uh, dark green that means it's a live mesh and I'm going to put some boxes across his waist here and I'm going to do this with the quad draw where you click out some points and then you just hold shift and you click and that creates a polygon and so I'm going to click out some shorts and switch the perspective view and because you have live modeling on it is attaching itself to the geometry which is pretty fantastic I'm not going to do it here in the in the crotch because I don't want it to snap to the inside of his butt crack there so I'm just going to leave it right there and then I'll fix it later and then I'm going to continue that process coming coming downwards here and I'm going to do it uh, by extending the edges. Oh yeah, and before I even extend the edges, I can just hold down shift and, and click on that edge loop and relax it. And notice how it cleans up the flow. It doesn't feel irregular at all. And it's still live modeling. It's still snapping to, to the character. And then the extending is just holding tab, and you can pull, pull on on the uh, edge, and then you can continue to draw polygons. 
in just about any direction. It is absolutely fantastic. Um, of course, we could go a little bit lower, right? We could come down to, let's go to the front view. Let's go down to like uh, here and see if it, yeah, so it, it caught that. And then we'll just get the full length of our boxers. And then we'll use the quad draw to insert edge loops. Yeah, and so now we can use quad draw. So we'll just hold control and click, middle click, 50% to get the remaining edge loops in there. And then we can hold shift and just relax it a bit. Smooth out the flow. I guess these are going to become boxer briefs, right? Because they're form fitting. All right, and then let's just get this above his, uh, his butt crack here so we can lift this up. Use soft selections when you do it. Use the uh, translate vertices uh, with soft selections turned on. And, oh, turn off the highlight back faces so you can't get to, to the back. There you go. And then just slide these, slide these up. And let's get a larger soft selection. There we go. There we go. Get this up. Pull up his pants. There we go. Of course, you can design anything you like. Um, I just think this is a nice, fast way to to getting to some clothing. I used to use curves, snap to the surface. Um, that's another method. Uh, but since the advent of soft selections on a live model with this retopologized mesh, it's just it's kind of a no-brainer. This is a great way to do it. Okay. Excuse me. Um, we're seeing that this isn't quite keeping to the shape. It's 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 intersecting the buttocks. So you will need a little bit more geometry. So we'll use the uh, quad draw and split that to accommodate the shape of the butt, like so. Yeah, and I was wondering if it would if it would relax with soft selections on, and it does indeed. Quite, quite nice. Really nice. Such fantastic tools. They've really come a long way. Excellent. Okay, now I just want to continue the quad draw on the inside of the thigh. So I guess we're making the boxer briefs. There we go, so that closes it off on the inside. Just drop a point, hold shift, and click, man, that's great. Fantastic. A little weird there on the inside of the thigh. Oh, I didn't really need one there, did I? I just hold shift and boom, there we go. There we go, that did it. And go ahead and relax that a little bit. Add in uh, edge loops if you need to. I tend to drop them at 50% um, just because it, well, just makes sense. So I, I'm always holding, holding control there when I drop it. Let's do one more on the inside and then we'll sculpt a little bulge for his private parts there. And, that, and then we'll close off the back end. We'll come across here. And that should be it. And then we'll do a thickening process. And we'll have a good object. 
All right, so I'm pretty close to done on the inside here. Just having a little trouble getting this one polygon to wreck it up. Oh, there it is. Did I get it? I think I got it. So I put the character on its own layer so I could just hide it and take a look. Yeah, that's pretty good. Okay, and then I can... I started to get a, a flow here just by, by dipping that, that vertex down. By pulling that one vertex down in the back. So I'll do the same thing over here. I'll just switch over to Move Tool. Uh, shrink my... Uh, shrink the... Uh, soft selection and then translate this yeah okay there we go just kind of get it pointing in that direction and then use the quad draw tool to to fill that in and then we can just go in that direction for the remaining pieces so let's get the other half in and that'll be easier to visualize what to do next so we'll drop out of this tool uh, select this in object mode. Uh, let's, oh yeah, let's uh, let's use the new symmetrize tool. Just hit my symmetrize tool, and then boom, it'll be on the other side. Uh, there's no overlapping vertices, so it didn't merge anything together. And if I hide my my character's layer here, you can see how the the pants are shaping up, the boxy briefs are shaping up, looking pretty good. Okay, then let's get these two halves together. Select the opposite upper edge and sh hold shift and double click to get the range on the inside. Then hold shift and double click the opposite end, which gets the whole thing. But then hold control and remove all of that outside edge of your selection. So now you just have the inside from, from the top of the butt in the back to the, above the waistline in the front and then hit the uh, bridge tool here inside of the uh, modeling toolkit. Now you can uh, click and drag to increase the number of divisions, which is this bullet right here. Um, you can leave it at one or two or three. I would set it to three. And uh, there's taste twi uh, uh, taper, uh, twist, and offset, but don't, don't do any of that stuff. So let's just get in here and uh, tweak model and adjust the shapes. And we can also use the... Um, quad draw tool to or or the multi cut tool to insert edges to get additional uh, uh, geometry so we can do a little bit of geometry modeling there inserting edges as we need great so I'll do a little bit of pushing and pulling of vertices off camera to just give them a sense of having some private parts and um, not such a strong wedgie Oh, and of course, I'm going to do that uh, with symmetry turned on. So I'll pick, say, that vertex, uh, that edge right there, and turn symmetry on, and then go ahead and with pr proceed with the uh, tweak modeling uh, vertices and so on. Oh, and, oh, I forgot. And we can turn the live mesh off. So unhide that guy and uh, hit the magnet icon at the status line at the top turn off the live mesh you won't need that anymore because uh, you've you've pretty much got all the boundaries you need maybe we'll use the live mesh to uh, fix the top of his pants here maybe I should just turn it back on here and fix the top of his pant line here straighten this out so we'll go to move and use the soft select and just straighten this out yeah something like that and then I can use the the relax feature on on quad draw and I might need looks like I'm getting some intersection here I might need one more edge loop running here perhaps across the butt um, just to 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 articulate that and then and then relax it and use a larger radius on the relaxing well maybe not so much so that it ruins that center line but just enough. It seems like that relaxing kind of wrecks the center line, so we're going to have to be careful with that. But off the center line, it's fantastic.
Yeah, and now turn off the live model. Go ahead to that magnet on the top of the status line and turn off that live model. And now proceed with uh, symmetry modeling the boxers and give a suggestion of of his uh, private parts here and fix the uh, crooked line that I saw had formed. When I did that relaxing, I ended up with this crooked line. So go ahead and select that whole edge loop right down center and give it a value of absolute value x0 and that should should have done it maybe I just need to get out of the modeling toolkit and do that maybe I just need to turn off symmetry for some reason it won't snap there we go so just make sure symmetry is turned off and then uh, pick an edge with the modeling toolkit turn symmetry back on there we go and now get to work yeah, and be sure to set the uh, character's layer to reference so that you can't select it there. So that's a bit of an, an annoyance. And uh, go ahead and, and continue. I'm just doing, a, a, again, the same process where I um, turn off the transform constraint so that I can change the contours and just pull on that a little bit, pull it forward and so on. Um, and then once I think it has a decent shape to it, um, I then come back in and uh, with the surface constraint turned on and I'll adjust the topology a bit and it seems to it seems to work out well and it still keeps to the legs it still keeps to the form and don't get too obsessed about the inside of the boxer not clipping the leg exactly um, we can always push the vertices out and we could always, uh, in a high resolution cloth simulation kind of thing, we could always turn, uh, uh, thicken the mesh, which is actually the route I'm going to go. I'm going to thicken the mesh, even if I don't use a cloth simulation. Um, I think I'll just do, so I really want to do um, some relaxing of the geometry, but I suppose I can do the relaxing of the geometry um, using the uh, sculpt geometry tool. That would be okay. So I'm just going to tweak a little bit more, and I'll be right back. It seems like the Relax tool of the Quadra really doesn't pay off unless the uh, unless there's something live referenced underneath. So I'm going to turn the live reference back on, go back to my Quadra, and select right, select the mesh first. Then go back to my Quadra and try to relax. Yeah, see that seemed to work out a lot better. Otherwise, those vertices just shoot all over the place. And I'll use um, that soft selection in combination with it. So that that live mesh is really essential for that uh, relax tool. That's why they're jumping around. See, so because of the live mesh, it's snapping those vertices down into the butt crack. So I don't want that. Um, I'll just kind of stay away from that with this tool, and then I'll use the um, the artisan brush, the sculpt geometry tool, with the relax feature. Um, and it should be symmetrical somewhat, but if, you know, if for some reason symmetry gets thrown off, I'll just uh, re-symmetrize it. That looks a lot better. This, this tool handled the, the back end a lot better. Yeah. Okay. And that's about the point of it. There we go. And if you're going to put socks on them, um, just do the same thing, the same process. It's a fantastic way to model once you've got something to to live model on top of. Actually, they look like swim trunks. Okay, so at this point, you have a couple of options. You can either thicken it so, you, so that the underpants has you know, an inner wall and an outer wall, or you can make a suggestion of thickness. And to create a suggestion of thickness, um, I would do, and I'll show you both ways. So let's do the suggestion of thickness first. So what you do is select all the components. I'm not in the modeling toolkit, by the way. I'm just regular vertices. So select all the components, and then go to Edit Mesh, Transform Components, and then grab the blue handle, the Z-axis, which is going to be the local position of the vertices, and just pull on that a little until it's not quite clipping the mesh or almost, almost not clipping the mesh. And that 
just pulls it away and you can see where we have um, we can see where we have uh, intersections so we'll need uh, maybe a little bit more geometry to to help prevent those intersections or uh, more geometry on the model itself but anyway pulling on the vertices like that pulls it away from the mesh it's it's the same as a push deformer in other software and then from here you can grab the outer edge so that would just be the whole upper outer edge and extrude it so we'll just do the standard extrude uh, which is still mapped to my control D key if you're using my preferences or extrude edge uh, uh, yeah here and th again same deal um, you're going to animate the local Z and when you do that just intersect the mesh just a little bit actually actually clip the body and this would be a sufficient um, game ready model with a little bit of an edge there and you might you might even bevel that edge or pull it out so you might grab that top edge there and go back to transform component you might do this where where you then tra you know pull it pull it away maybe pull it down not not quite like that but that that's that's a sufficient and then you might bevel it uh, bevel there you are and you know a, a much wider uh, offset on the bevel actually bevel's probably a bad idea at this scale um, let's just do a uh, insert edge loop and we'll use the um, quad draw or multi cut with the edge flow to do it and there that's acceptable right there that's it that looks nice okay so you got a little bit of intersection you can pull on those vertices individually that'll work too so grab that go here uh, go to yeah soft selections vertices soft selections there we go and oh yeah and symmetry I, I don't have it turned on symmetry there we go and just pull on those a little bit just a little see just like that simple enough just to remove the clipping and if you're going to use if you are going to use subdivision surfaces you probably don't even have to do this step because you simply select the mesh hit number three and notice that that pulls it in anyway okay so uh, it all depends on your final outcome so I would just you know be sure you're removing clipping and the accuracy of your video card to display one mesh on top of another is entirely dependent on how expensive your video card is but so when I pull back like that it's just because my video card can't display it so when you get a little bit closer you can see it's it's okay and if you need to push on those vertices a little more go ahead and then of course it kind of changed the shape of the private region here uh, you might want to go in there and tweak that a little further but it actually it's almost looking like a diaper at this point because of how thick it is so again just uh, <laughs> kind of funny so just be careful on, uh, on how you do that but it doesn't look too bad from the back uh, I mean from way back here maybe even turn on subdivision surfaces for the for the boxer briefs there and it's not too bad and that would also be a part of the envelope if uh, if this character is to be animated which it is prepared to be animated and we would simply add more divisions running down the center line we would uh, select this object and we would then split it further down center line so that when we lift a leg up or out there's enough vertices on in between the legs to support the deformation okay looks good okay and then I promise to show you the thickening process which is the same as what we did in the intro to modeling class uh, but if you weren't in that or hadn't seen that yet or forgot about it here it is again so you just take the object in object mode and go to extrude uh, not not that one uh, face extrude and pull on the blue handle and just pull it out a little bit and if that doesn't quite do it if that's um, if that's throwing vertices off into weird directions in space and occasionally it does uh, you can use the thicken method which is 
this parameter right right there thick, thickness okay but what we did was the local translate z okay so you could use thickness and I'll just use my virtual slider here so you could use thickness and notice the thick okay here we go so thickness is throwing some vertices off into some weird directions so that's okay that's bad all right so we're not going to use that so we'll use local translate z in the extrude window there and just a little bit of thickness doesn't really require much there we go okay but if you never ever ever plan to you know take the boxers off then don't do this process do the first one which is the boxers pushed so I'm just tweaking this a little bit I don't like how when I, I pulled this out really really far I'm, I'm back on the uh, boxers pushed method and it just started looking like a diaper uh, because that <laughs> because it pulled away from the body for so much, so, uh, so very much. Uh, so I'm going to um, select that edge and hit Control Delete there, and that one and hit Control Delete, and uh, let's get out of subdivision surface and just um, translate using that same tool, um, transform component, and translate the that edge just a little bit better, and and even turn on the modeling toolkit, uh, turn off the soft selections and use the uh, edge slide and just translate that up a little bit better yeah that's really all i need yeah you, you know and don't forget to soften the edges of the uh, of the underwear there so that um, when it's in just raw polygon mode um, it'll appear smoother don't forget that I'm going to conclude this character right where we are uh, right now. Uh, there's so much more that I want to do. I want to put socks on them. Um, I want to put teeth and tongue inside of the mouth. I want an eyeball. Um, I want to take them, uh, I want to unwrap them. I want to prepare them for paint. I want to begin the painting process. I want to show a detailing process of this, uh, but there's still that other process that I need to show which is the um, the contemporary method, which is where we start with the high poly and then we work our way to the low poly version. So this teaches you all of those fundamental concepts that you need for topology flow. And there's, there's still more that we can discuss in different ways in which we can do things, like different ways we can tweak the shoulders or, the, or whatever, the knees. Um, but we would just be going on and on and on for hours on end. Uh, take solace in knowing that I can append the volume that you've just purchased at any time and when I do that, which I most likely someday I will, um, and I add more to this character, um, I'll append that volume to continue the progress of this guy because I would at the very least like to have uh, the socks, the teeth, the tongue, and the eyes. But for now, I'm going to conclude this. I need to move on to the contemporary method because I am running out of time. So I think this has been a good, good process. You've definitely learned a lot up to this point, and I'll see you in the next section.